Hello everyone, welcome back to Planet Linux. This is a very special distribution review that I've been looking forward to for quite some time, really ever since I heard about it being announced here. And the reason that I'm so excited for this is that it, I truly believe it's a milestone in the Linux desktop space. As we'll begin to see here in just a minute, I feel that this is poised to be the perfect combination of the best that free software has to offer, along with the industry impact that only money can buy. And what I'm talking about here is the recent beta release of Ubuntu OS X Fedora Edition. This is an amazing collaboration between three important companies that have been very impactful in their own industries, and now they all want to contribute and come together in a way that improves the entire corporate open source industry as a whole. But before we get into looking at the features of this distribution, I'm proud to say that this channel has its first sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Le uh, Stars. I hear that it's a really cool game with lots of really cool characters, so I highly recommend that you go check it out. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the video, this is a collaboration between Canonical, Apple, and the Fedora and Red Hat teams to create this distribution, but it's also in collaboration with the GNOME team, as they've gone above and beyond to make an amazing user experience here. Uh, in fact, they felt that this was so monumental that it really deserves to be a separate project from the original vision of GNOME, uh, as this has been a very important collaboration that brings multiple companies' ideas together. So I'm sure that the GNOME team is very proud to be debuting here the very first release of GNOSX, their latest desktop environment that includes a lot of really nice innovations. Now, they're touting this as a revolution to the minimalist user interface, and for the most part, I'm actually inclined to agree with that. We'll just start by looking at the top bar here. Now, GNOME has had a top bar for years now. Uh, it's been kind of a central location for a lot of things, but it seems that they've decided that it can do more that there's no need for additional panels or applets when the top bar can just do everything, and GNOS X embraces that philosophy. For example, it was decided that having both a top bar and a favorite stock was just too cumbersome. So all of the functionality of both has been jam-packed here into just this convenient top left corner. You have access to all of your applications, as well as all of your favorites that were from your dock, and all of your open applications and workspaces are all managed from this tiny little corner up here. Each icon is just mere pixels away from each other, making sure that they're all right there, easy for your mouse to click on. Now, it seems that Apple felt that GNOME's single status menu in the top right, with all of their options in that one menu, was just a little too close to their control center that they have across their platforms. So they've gone back to the drawing board and redesigned it so that each option from the menu is spread out as its own icon along the panel here. And they've made sure that each option only includes one or two items for the sake of simplicity. You'll also notice that it appears Martin Wimpress from Canonical has spent a little too much time working on Ubuntu Mate in recent years, and he really seems to miss the GNOME 2 and Compiz days, as he made a point here to include both wobbly as well as fiery windows. And finally, on the topic of user interface, regarding the window controls, this is a truly remarkable feat of compromise between these companies, as they all got to have a little bit of say in the window controls. Apple insisted that users would be able to find the controls most easily if they were on the left side of the window here. Canonical and Ubuntu didn't really care which side they were on, as they've switched sides every 10 years anyways. And Fedora didn't mind the placement, but they and the GNOME team insisted that it only include a close button, as there's clearly no need to minimize windows on your desktop, especially with this fantastic new application manager here in the top bar. And you can obviously maximize a window by double-clicking the title bar, but not anywhere in the title bar. For example, not this path bar, but a nice blank space in the title bar. 
I also want to highlight a nice updated application here in Ubuntu OS X Fedora Edition. And this is inside of the App Store, or rather, software. You'll notice the applications now have this nice new privacy section here that talks about whether an application is safe to download or not. And it gives a lot of great information about the type of license that an application has, whether it's been verified by your distribution or not, among other things. Now this is a fantastic feature that Apple seems to have brought over to the App Store here from their other platforms. And, well, actually, it looks like my notes are saying that the GNOME team has had it in here for a good year already. I can't imagine Apple would go out of their way to act like they've invented some amazing new feature that they didn't actually create in the first place. That just doesn't seem very likely. Anyways, nonetheless, regardless of who did this here, it's quite a nice feature to have, and privacy and security advocates will certainly appreciate it. And finally, we'll take a look at resource usage here. I just rebooted the system, and as we can see on a fresh reboot, it's only using about 3.1 out of our available 4 gigabytes. So it's actually quite efficient on resources, leaving entire megabytes available for you to use all of your applications. It's an incredibly light system for all of the features that are offered here. So overall, this is a very promising first step in this collaboration, and I hope to see this project continue as it's remarkable the amount of work that has been done so far and put into this. I certainly think this is a very promising system, and I hope that you see a lot of its benefits as well. I also hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, a like is greatly appreciated. If there's anything you'd like to talk about, feel free to post in the comments section. I do my best to reply to all of those. And if you haven't already, I do recommend subscribing to the channel and marking the notification bell, as well as following me on Twitter at PlanetLinux98 to stay up to date with all the latest channel content. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time here on Planet Linux.